Hey guys, a while ago I was given this little gadget to review on the channel. It's called Mego and it's a portable battery powered power supply for your breadboard. This is what it looks like. You may have seen it in the pictures that I posted on social media soon after I got it. Well, I've been using it for several weeks now and I can finally tell you if it's any good or not. But before we begin, I have to clarify that I was given this product sample for free by the guys who make it. But still, everything that I'm about to say in this video is my honest opinion. If this wasn't a good product, I wouldn't have made this video in the first place. So let's start with an overview of the specs and features of the Mego. First of all, it is designed to run on battery power, and that explains the size. It has a 2000 mAh or a 7 Watt hour lithium polymer battery built in. The output voltage is adjustable and it goes from 4 volts all the way to 24 volts. You can see the output voltage on the display right here. Charging is done through a micro USB port at the back. Two LEDs indicate when the battery is low and when the unit is powered on. There are two outputs, one is the USB port and the other are these pin headers which plug directly into the breadboard. The maximum power output is 5 watts whether you're using the USB port or the pin headers. Technically, you can get up to 6 watts out of a fully charged Mego, but 5 watts is the recommended maximum. You also get short circuit and overload protection, which is great to see on a product designed for hobbyists, beginners and students. Inside the box you get a carrying pouch for the Mego. These tiny screws, aside from looking cute, are for adjusting the voltage. There's a cable with a USB port on one end and a battle jack on the other. A micro USB port used for charging. And this cable has a USB port on one end and alligator clips on the other. In addition, there's a user manual in English. And that is what you get out of the box with a Mego. The Mego is designed to be used with this type of breadboard or its half size version, which I think makes sense since these appear to be the most common. You plug the device straight into the power rails and that's it. Pretty convenient, I'd say. The voltage is adjusted by twisting a very small precision potentiometer on the side. This is somewhat inconvenient because to do that you need a very small screwdriver. On the other hand, there's practically no way of changing the voltage by accident, so I think that convenience was sacrificed for safety reasons. One thing I've noticed is that the voltage might drop in case you plug in a heavier load, such as this 1 amp dummy load. It's not by much, but you might need to fine adjust the voltage in case that's critical for your application. Another downside is that the minimum voltage might not be suitable for devices and chips that require 3.3 volts to operate. Double checking with the multimeter shows that the voltage readings are pretty accurate. Here we have the Mego powering a very basic circuit. As you can see, it's handling it without any issues. Using the provided alligator clips, you can power parts and uh, modules directly. For example, I'm using this DC motor right here. I power on the Mego, it starts spinning. And here I have another circuit. It's a basic audio amplifier using the LM386 chip amp. The reason why I wanted to demonstrate the Mego with an audio amp is that if there is any considerable noise on the voltage rail, it would most likely be audible through the speaker. Fortunately, the signal is pretty clean, so there is no noise to be worried about. According to specs, ripple voltage on the Mega should be within 1%. I now have it set at 9 volts and I just measured it at 9 volts, so anything below 90 millivolts should be a pass. And good news, according to the scope, ripple voltage is only around 40 millivolts. Of course, battery life on the Mega will depend on how much power your project consumes. I ran a test several times at 5 volts using this adjustable LED light as load and my USB meter. The meter gives me voltage, current and most importantly energy consumed in milliwatt hours. So after running the test several times I got 4.83 watt hours out of a fully charged Mego. Now the battery inside the Mego is rated at 7.4 watt hours. But let's not forget that the voltage conversion process is not 100% efficient, which explains the difference. You can recharge the Mego from the micro USB port at the back. 
According to specs, it should charge fully in about two and a half hours. However, I used a more powerful charger, something around 10, 15 watts, and it actually charged in just one hour. Something worth mentioning, the Mego is not designed to be charged while it's in use, so don't use it when it's charging. So that's the Mego in a nutshell. Overall, I think it's a nice little gadget and I would recommend checking it out at the link in the description. But I have not yet mentioned what I think is the biggest drawback of the Mego, and that is the price. Right now, the Mego costs more than 50 US dollars. And yes, the adjustable voltage, the form factor and the built-in battery are all great features, but 50 US dollars might be above what a beginner might be willing to spend on one of these. Still, let's not forget that benchtop power supplies like this one cost more than $100 and are nowhere near portable. And on the other side of the price spectrum, we have these cheap little guys from China. They cost about $3 and also plug into the breadboard, just like this. But they offer very little in terms of protection and are limited to either 5 or 3.3 volts. And in general, be very careful when using these because they're not very well made. Actually, this guy is already broken and whatever voltage you put on the inside, it will come out straight on the outside, no regulation. Okay, let's wrap up and summarize. The Mego gives you the convenience of a built-in battery, adjustable voltage, and the form factor allows you to plug in straight into the breadboard. On the downside, it's a bit more expensive than I wish it was. But still, if it fits your budget, I think you're gonna like it. Feel free to check it out at the link in the video description. Thanks for watching my review of the Mego breadboard power supply. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel to never miss any of my future videos.